I love music, and on April the 1st I brought out a video showing the Henry Hoover pipe organ playing Africa by Toto. Now some people said it's not real, because you can't suck on a recorder to make a sound. Nothing. But it is real, and today I'm going to show you how I built it. Well, it all starts with a design. So first of all, I designed these valve blocks, which have basically got holes in, and there's a servo that turns that reveals that hole and lets air out. So all of these are connected to a manifold, essentially, that's connected to this central piece. So if we take the lid off there where the main pipe goes into Henry Hoover's nose, we can see that we've got these tubes that go down each side. And of course, we've got these end caps on here, which um, block those off and make the air only go up those tubes, essentially, when that servo opens the valve. So if we just put that top plate back on there, obviously we can see as we open the valve with a servo, that reveals the hole and that lets the air out. So now it's just a case of 3D printing these and getting some electronics. So on the back of most modern keyboards, you'll find these connectors labelled MIDI in, out, through. And that's basically serial data that gives you all the note data for velocity, note on, note off, and program change messages, and various other controllers. You can also get a USB interface for a computer, which does the same thing. So we've got MIDI in and out there, so we can use a computer program to sequence notes. So I've now connected my keyboard to that MIDI shield on the Arduino and we've got some Arduino code which allows us to read the musical notes. So I've got the uh, MIDI library included there. Have a look at the SparkFun page on how to use the shield um, and the library is open source as well. You can find that on GitHub. I'll put links to the CAD and code in the description to this video. So basically it's pretty simple. Um, the main template here basically does two calls to some handlers for note on and note off and then you can basically put your own code in there. So for now I've just put in a serial print so we can read that data out to the serial terminal. So we have a quick look here at the serial monitor and then we go and press some notes on the keyboard. We should see three things, which of course are the channel. My keyboard is broadcasting on channel six at the moment. The notes number, so as I go up there, 65, six, seven, eight, 69 and the last number is the velocity so if we press the key really gently and really hard then we should get a higher number and I think the max is 127 yep there we go and all the way down to zero if I press really gently so now we can use that to activate our servos however we've only got 12 pipes there's six on each side 12 valves and then obviously on the keyboard We've got a lot more notes than that, but there are only 12 notes in an octave, and that's basically from one place and an octave higher, which is double the frequency. So that's 12 notes. So basically what I've done in code is wrapped around. So as you pay off the top of an octave, and you play up the next ones, it actually goes back to the beginning and plays the low note again. So some things sound a bit weird, but there's no way to do it really, unless I had sort of several octaves of 12 of these, or lots of Henrys, all playing 12 notes each. And what I've of course done is taped off the fingering on each recorder, so each one is just fixed and plays one note when the valve opens. A recorder only just plays one, over one octave anyway, it only plays one extra note or two extra notes over an octave, so it can't play really high notes or really low notes. So if I wanted to do more octaves, I'd need tenor recorders or some other instruments. So in order to activate the servos, of course, I'm using the Arduino servo library. These are just little um, RC servos, which are pretty standard. So we've got 12 servos defined. And basically, we've just got some if statements that says if the pitch, that note is all of these, which happen to be that particular servo up the keyboard, 
then go and open that servo and down here we've got another one that goes and moves it back for the note off messages and you'll notice in that if statement I'm basically only looking at channels 4 and 6 and that allows me to play some channels, some instruments on Henry Hoover and the rest go and they get sent out so it sends the notes out to that MIDI out port on the interface and that gets played on the keyboard to play the accompaniment, the drums and the bass line and all the other instruments. So the keyboard's still plugged into that interface and we're running the code now that moves the servo. So if I hit a note down here, you can see this one moves. But if we hit the one an octave higher, it's still the same one. So of course all of these play all of the servos and it doesn't matter where I hit the note. It's still the same one, which means that basically I can play any music and if we run out of notes, it just goes back and plays a more bassy note. The servos themselves are powered by another battery. It's just a 12 volt LiPo plugged into a little uh, junction thing with a little voltage readout so I can monitor the battery. And then above that's one of these 10 amp 5 volt regulators, which is probably complete overkill, but there's no problem for riding the power for all of those motors. So to actually play Africa by Toto, I'm using this piece of software, which is free and it's called MIDI Editor and then I downloaded the sequence, a MIDI file, with all the sequence of notes for Africa by Toto, so now this actually plays on my computer. And that's just using the internal synth in my sound card, but what I can do is go and connect that to the uh, MIDI Sport, which is basically the hardware interface, and that goes and sends the music out to my shield. And you'll notice there's several instruments here, and these are all on different channels, and that's why I filtered on two channels, so the main lead line and the melody gets played on Henry and the rest gets sent out to the keyboard. But you still can't suck on a recorder to make a sound. I tried all the places. But still nothing, so how are we going to make the airflow? Well in the end I'm afraid my Henry Hoover is a bit of a fraud. He's actually a donor Hoover, here's a faulty one I got off eBay for £20. And there's another pipe that comes straight out of his back, so that hose going from his nose into the manifold just comes straight through him. I drilled a hole in the back and it goes somewhere. Yep, actually this is a 10 metre hose and it goes all the way down these stairs and into another room. Yep, it comes down here to this other Henry who's got a 3D printed sort of thing sat on his back here which actually blows air, so obviously he sucks through his nose and this is just the um, air output port where air blows out, of course it has to go somewhere so I've just attached that to the other end of the hose so in fact he's blowing air, but it is Henry Hoover powered so you can hear there's quite a lot of leakage in the system um, and that's fine so we don't sort of blow the whole thing up with too much pressure but now I can in fact play Henry Hoover and of course the Hoover's downstairs so it doesn't make that sound if this was actually a real Hoover running it'd be really noisy So of course it is possible to play other music on Henry, you can pipe in any MIDI file pretty much, although it involves hacking the code at the moment to decide which tracks get played on the pipes and which go out to the backing track and every file you download is different, so that takes a bit of time. What I'd like in the future is 16 switches for the MIDI channels attached to Henry and then I can switch them either way and I can sort of change them on the fly and see what sounds best that make it easier to play other tracks. But before I do that I'd like to make some other pieces to this synth, so perhaps a bass line played on power tools or something like that and a percussion instrument so we can play more of it on Henry and on other characters and less on the synth so that would be quite good so don't forget to check out last video for the whole performance of Africa by Toto thanks again to Moth Cub for the narrative on that intro don't forget to check that out for the story of Henry's life and how he ended up playing music all right that's all for now